In this video, we will discuss the venous system of the human body. Let's begin with lower limb venous anatomy. Veins of the lower limb are classified into three groups, namely superficial veins, deep veins, and perforators. First, we'll discuss the deep veins. Deep veins accompany major arteries and their branches. They are frequently arranged in pair of veins, especially the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, and the peroneal veins. For the ease of understanding these are drawn only as single veins. In the foot, the plantar digital veins unite into plantar metatarsal veins, which empty into the deep plantar venous arch. The plantar venous arch continues as medial and lateral plantar veins, which continues as posterior tibial vein. On the dorsum of the foot, the deep veins are formed by the dorsalis pedis vein. The dorsalis pedis vein continues as anterior tibial vein. The peroneal vein originates in the distal third of the leg and ascend to unite with the posterior tibial vein to form the tibioperineal trunk. The anterior tibial vein joins the tibioperineal trunk to form the popliteal vein. The main tributaries of the popliteal vein are small saphenous vein and gastrocnemius veins. The popliteal vein as it ascends through the hiatus magnus, it becomes the superficial femoral vein. The superficial femoral vein unites with deep femoral vein to form common femoral vein. The common femoral vein continues as external iliac vein as it passes deep to the inguinal ligament. Superficial veins run along the subcutaneous tissue, superficial to the fascia. These include greater saphenous vein and small saphenous vein and their tributaries. On the dorsum of the foot, the digital veins form dorsal metatarsal veins, they drain into dorsal venous arch. The medial end of the dorsal arch continues as greater saphenous vein, and the lateral end continues as small saphenous vein. The greater saphenous vein passes anterior to medial malleolus, ascends medial to knee, and passes posterior to the medial condyle at the knee. In the thigh the greater saphenous vein ascends anteriorly, enters the fossa ovalis, pierces the cribriform fascia, and empties into the common femoral vein, at about 4 cm inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle. The tributaries of the greater saphenous vein in the leg are mainly two, anterior venous tributary, and the more constant posterior arch vein. In the thigh, it receives two large tributaries, just before emptying into the common femoral vein. They are lateral accessory and medial accessory saphenous veins. The lateral accessory saphenous vein is almost always present. In addition, it also receives small tributaries like superficial external pudental vein, superficial circumflex iliac vein, and superficial epigastric vein. The small saphenous vein passes posterior to the lateral malleolus, ascends along the lateral border of the Achilles tendon, in the upper part of the leg, it pierces the deep fascia, and drains into the popliteal vein. There are many perforators connecting the superficial vein to deep veins. They drain blood from the superficial system to the deep system. But we will discuss only the important ones. In the foot the perforators are unique, as they are drain blood from deep to superficial system. These are medial and lateral ankle perforators, which drain the blood from the deep system to the greater and small saphenous veins, respectively. The lateral ankle perforators are also called custers or maze perforators. In the leg, the medial calf perforators, also known as cocket perforators, are the important ones, these connect the posterior arch vein of greater saphenous vein to the posterior tibial vein. Boyd's perforators are located just below the knee, it connects the greater saphenous vein to the deep veins. In the thigh, the clinically important direct perforators are dods. Perforators, these connect the greater saphenous vein to the femoral veins. This completes the lower limb venous system. Let's discuss the upper limb venous system. 
There are superficial veins and deep veins in the upper limb. First, we'll discuss the deep veins. The deep veins accompany the arteries of the upper limb. They are paired veins, called vena comitans. They are situated underneath the deep fascia. The deep system of upper limb is formed by the ulna veins and radial veins in the forearm. They join to form the brachial veins. Superficial veins run along the subcutaneous tissue, superficial to the fascia. They course away from the pressure points. So superficial veins are absent in the palm, ulnar border of forearm, and in the back of the arm. Major superficial veins in the upper limb are, basilic and cephalic veins. On the dorsum of the hand, the dorsal digital veins form dorsal metacarpal veins, they drain into dorsal venous arch. The lateral end of the dorsal venous arch continues as cephalic vein. And the medial end of the dorsal venous arch continues as basilic vein. Basilic vein ascends along the medial aspect of the forearm. In the middle of the arm, basilic vein pierces the deep fascia. And at the lower border of teres major muscle the basilic vein joins with the brachial vein to form the axillary vein. The cephalic vein ascends along the anterolateral aspect of the forearm. It passes in front of the elbow. In the arm, the cephalic vein ascends along the lateral border of biceps muscle. Then it pierces the deep fascia at the lower border of the pectoralis major muscle. Then it runs in the deltopectoral groove, after that the cephalic vein pierces the clavipectoral fascia, and then it drains into the axillary vein. The other tributaries of axillary vein are thoracoacromial vein, lateral thoracic vein, subscapular vein, anterior circumflex humeral vein, and posterior circumflex humeral vein. The axillary vein continues as subclavian vein from the outer border of the first rib. Median cubital vein is a large communicating vein, it drains blood from the cephalic to the basilic vein. It starts from the cephalic vein below the elbow, runs obliquely, and medially, then drains into the basilic vein. It is communicated with the deep veins via a perforator vein. This perforator vein fixes the median cubital vein, thus, it makes ideal for intravenous injections. Median antibrachial vein begins from the palmar venous plexus. It ascends in the forearm and it drains in any one of the veins in front of the elbow. This completes the venous system of the upper limb. Now let's discuss the venous system of the head and neck. Veins of the head and neck can be grouped into external an internal group. Internal group consists of venous sinuses of the dura mater, emissary veins, and diploic veins. Emissary veins are valveless venous channels that connect the venous sinuses of the dura mater to the extracranial venous systems. Diploic veins are intraosseous venous channels present in the cancellous bone of the skull. Let's discuss about venous sinuses of the dura mater in detail. It can be classified into paired and unpaired groups as shown. Unpaired sinuses are superior sagittal, inferior sagittal, straight, occipital, anterior and posterior intercavernous sinuses. The paired sinuses are transverse, sigmoid, cavernous, superior petrocell, inferior petrocell, and sphenoparietal sinuses. The superior sagittal sinus begins at Christagalli, it passes backward. On reaching the internal occipital protuberance, it deviates to the right side and forms confluence of sinuses. And it continues as right transverse sinus. The confluence of sinuses also receives blood from occipital sinus. Inferior sagittal sinus collects blood from medial surface of the cerebrum and falx cerebri, and it empties into the straight sinus. The straight sinus passes backward and downward, and terminates usually into the left transverse sinus. The left transverse sinus is connected to the confluence of sinuses via a communicating vein. One of the tributaries of straight sinuses, the great cerebral vein of Galen. 
It is formed by the union of two internal cerebral veins. The great cerebral vein receives the basal veins of Rosenthal from each side before its termination into the straight sinus. Each transverse sinus continues below as sigmoid sinus. The sigmoid sinus leaves the skull through the posterior compartment of jugular foramen, where it turns down and continues as internal jugular vein. At the commencement of the vein, it is dilated and it is known as superior bulb. The cavernous sinuses are situated on each side of the body of sphenoid bone. Its tributaries are superior ophthalmic vein, sphenoparietal sinus, superficial middle cerebral vein, a few inferior cerebral veins, and sometimes middle meningeal vein. Cavernous sinus communicates with transverse sinus via the superior petrosal sinus. It communicates with internal jugular vein via inferior petrosal sinus. It communicates with pterygoid venous plexus via emissary veins. It communicates with opposite cavernous sinus via anterior and posterior intercavernous sinuses. It communicates with superior sagittal sinus via superficial middle cerebral vein. The superior ophthalmic vein communicates with angular vein. The angular vein is formed by the union of supratrochlear and supraorbital veins. The angular vein continues as facial vein. It runs downward and backward in the face. It communicates with the pterygoid plexus via the deep facial vein. So facial vein communicates with cavernous sinus via two pathways, one via the superior ophthalmic vein and other via the pterygoid venous plexus. The superficial temporal vein joins with the maxillary vein to form retromandibular vein. The retromandibular vein divides into anterior and posterior branches. The anterior branch joins with the facial vein to form common facial vein. The common facial vein drains into the internal jugular vein. The posterior branch of retromandibular vein joins with posterior auricular vein to form the external jugular vein. The external jugular vein runs downward and drain into the subclavian vein. The internal jugular vein joins with subclavian vein to form brachiocephalic vein. Tributaries of internal jugular vein are inferior petrosal sinus, pharyngeal veins, common facial vein, lingual, superior thyroid vein, middle thyroid vein, sometimes occipital vein. The last tributaries are thoracic duct on the left side and right lymphatic duct on the right side. Each duct open at the junction of subclavian and internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein communicates with external jugular vein via oblique jugular vein. It also communicates with cavernous sinus via inferior petrosal sinus. The tributaries of external jugular vein are posterior external jugular vein, transverse cervical vein, suprascapular vein, and anterior jugular vein. Anterior jugular vein communicates with the opposite side via jugular venous arch. It should be noted that, usually the blood from superficial cerebral veins drain into right internal jugular vein, via superior sagittal sinus, right transverse, and sigmoid sinuses. The blood from deep cerebral veins tend to drain into left internal jugular vein via great cerebral vein, straight sinus, left transverse, and sigmoid sinuses. This completes the venous system of head and neck. Let's discuss the venous system of thorax and abdomen. The right and left brachiocephalic vein joins to form superior vena cava. The superior vena cava then drains into the right atrium. The tributaries of each brachiocephalic veins are vertebral veins, inferior thyroid veins, thymic veins, first posterior intercostal veins, and the internal thoracic veins. Now let's concentrate on the external iliac veins. External iliac vein is the continuation of common femoral vein after it crosses underneath the inguinal ligament. The tributaries of external iliac veins are inferior epigastric, deep circumflex iliac veins, and pubic veins. The internal iliac vein joins with the external iliac vein to form common iliac vein. The tributaries of internal iliac vein are superior gluteal vein, inferior gluteal vein, internal pudendal vein, obturator vein, lateral sacral vein, vesical venous, plexus, middle rectal veins. And in females the tributaries also include uterine veins and 
Vaginal veins. The common iliac veins join to form the inferior vena cava in front of the body of L5 vertebra. The tributaries of common iliac veins are iliolumbar vein and ascending lumbar veins. The median sacral vein drains into the left common iliac vein, or sometimes in the angle of junction of the two common iliac veins. The inferior vena cava passes upwards, on the right side of the abdominal aorta. It pierces the central tendon of the diaphragm, at the level of T8 vertebra. And it drains, into the right atrium. The tributaries of inferior vena cava are, a pair of inferior phrenic veins, hepatic veins, a pair of renal veins, right suprarenal vein, right gonadal vein, and lumbar veins. The third and fourth pairs of lumbar veins, drain directly into the inferior vena cava. The first and second pair drains into the ascending lumbar vein. The left suprarenal vein and the left gonadal vein drains into left renal vein. The right subcostal vein joins with the right ascending lumbar vein to form the azagous vein. Sometimes azagous vein arises from back of the inferior vena cava as lumbar azagous vein. The azagous vein ascends in the posterior mediastinum. Opposite to T4 vertebra, it arches forward and drain into the superior vena cava. The tributaries of azagous vein are posterior intercostal veins of right side. Except the first vein. As the first posterior intercostal vein drains into the right brachiocephalic vein. The second, third, and fourth posterior intercostal veins unite to form the right superior intercostal vein, and it drains into the azagous vein. The rest of the posterior intercostal veins drain separately into the azagous vein. The left subcostal vein unites with left ascending lumbar vein to form hemiazygous vein. The hemiazygous vein enters the thorax and drains into the azygous vein at the level of T8 vertebra. The hemiazygous veins receive lower three left posterior intercostal veins. Hemiazygous vein communicates with the left renal vein. The accessory azygous vein receives blood from fifth to eight posterior intercostal veins and drain into azagous vein at the level of T7 vertebra. The left superior intercostal vein is formed by the union of the second to fourth left posterior intercostal veins, and it drains into the left brachiocephalic vein. The first posterior intercostal vein on the left side also drains into the left brachiocephalic vein. The esophageal, pericardial, and mediastinal veins also drain into the azagous venous system. The right bronchial vein drains into the azagous vein. The left bronchial vein either drains into left superior intercostal vein or drains into accessory azagous vein. The accessory azagous vein may communicate above with the left superior intercostal vein and below with the hemiazygous vein. The anterior intercostal veins drain into the internal thoracic vein and musculophrenic vein. Now let's discuss the portal venous system. The portal vein is formed by the union of splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein behind the neck of pancreas at the level of L2 vertebra. The trunk of the portal vein passes upwards, reaches the porta hepatis, and it divides into right and left branches. The right branch receives cystic vein, and the left branch receives para umbilical vein. The right and left portal veins supply the physiological right and left lobes of liver respectively. Each branch of portal vein enters the liver, divides into portal venules, then it drains into hepatic sinusoids, then it drains into central vein, which then drain into hepatic vein, and into the inferior vena cava. The trunk of the portal vein receives left and right gastric veins. The inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein. The other tributaries of splenic vein are short gastric veins, pancreatic veins, and left gastroepiploic vein. The tributaries of superior mesenteric vein are right gastroepiploic vein, middle colic vein, right colic vein, and iliocolic vein. The ileal and jejunal veins also drain into superior mesenteric vein. The tributaries of inferior mesenteric vein are left colic vein, sigmoidal vein, and superior rectal vein. 
Let's now discuss the porta cable anastomosis. First communication is at the lower end of the esophagus, the tributaries of left gastric vein of portal system, anastomos with esophageal tributaries of hemiazygous veins of cable system. In portal hypertension, these veins distend to form the esophageal varices. Second communication is at the lower end of rectum and anal canal. The superior rectal vein of portal system communicates with middle and inferior rectal veins of cable system. In portal hypertension these veins enlarge to form internal hemorrhoids. Third communication is at the umbilicus. The paraumbilical vein of portal system communicates with lateral thoracic, superior epigastric, superficial epigastric, and inferior epigastric veins of cable system. In portal hypertension, these veins distend to form caput medusae. Fourth site of porta cable communication is at retroperitoneum, between splenic vein and left renal vein, and between left colic vein and left renal vein. The other sites of communications are, at the bare area of liver, in the falciform ligament, and at the fissure for the ligamentum venosum. Now let's discuss the cardiac venous drainage. The great cardiac vein and the oblique vein of left atrium unites to form the coronary sinus. The great cardiac vein runs along the left anterior descending artery. The other tributaries of coronary sinus are small cardiac veins, the posterior vein of the left ventricle, and the middle cardiac vein. The middle cardiac vein runs along the posterior descending artery. The coronary sinus opens into the right atrium, often guarded by Thebesian valve. There are anterior cardiac veins, which drain directly into the right atrium. There are also veni, cordis minimi, these veins open into different chambers of the heart via the foramina minimarum. This completes the venous system of thorax and abdomen. With this we complete the entire venous system of the human body. Hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.